Welcome to the sorting part two. This video will give you a quick overview of the spreadsheet and the basic things you need to know in order to use this with your students. We finished part one in the last video, so let's move on to part two. To start our tour, let's focus on the form responses sheet. This is where the Google form results will come in. Right now, we've got a bunch of sample information so we can practice working with the data. But first, let's get familiar with the columns. As you hover the mouse on different cells in the heading, you'll see these notes pop up that give you directions as to what that column does. I wanna encourage you to take the time to review these notes as you work through the sheets. If at any point in the video I'm moving too fast, feel free to pause the video, review the notes, and come back. Now, if a column heading is blue, that means it's coming directly from the Google Form. Every other column on this sheet will be a formula of some kind to process the data from the form. Red headings are extra important as the code that sends the emails automatically uses the red and some of the blue columns to determine what needs to be sent in the email and where it should go. Make sure not to move or change these columns in any way. To help minimize mistakes, you'll see these little minus signs throughout the sheet. These are column and row groupings that will allow you to hide and show columns more easily. For now, let's go ahead and close most of these and then we will finish the tour. First up, let's close the grouping on row number two. If you remember, copy down uses this row to find the formulas that need to be pulled down as results come in. We don't want to mess with any of these. We don't want to accidentally move them or change them. So the best thing we can do right now is hit the minus sign and hide that row. Next, let's close the first column group. So as these first five columns don't need to be moved in any way, we want to hide the first column group. The next group is one you might want to keep open in the future if you want to sort the sheet by instrument or grade level. These blue columns coming from the form can be changed if needed. We'll have more details on that in part four of the tutorial. For now, let's close this group though. So there's lots of information in the middle here that we're going to cover in a moment, but for now, let's continue working our way to the right. Column X and every column to the right is going to be a formula of some kind that takes the quiz results and turns it into a score. For now, let's hide that column group. Column BB is where the responses to the questions in the quiz come in, as they are blue headings. Let's hide those as well. Now, column CE actually shows if copy down worked correctly. If we unhide row two, we'll see this comment here that's automatically put in. This is another reminder that it is critical that we do not sort this sheet with row two visible. So again, let's hide row two. And since column CE, we don't really need to see on a regular basis unless there's some sort of error. Let's go ahead and join it with this column grouping. To do that, we're gonna click on column E, Go up to View, Group, and then Group Column. And the minus sign popped up, and it's now part of that group. Let's hide it. And finally, our last column. Whenever an email is sent to a student, its success or failure will be logged here. To save you time scrolling over to the right, to check on this, I put some conditional formatting back in column L. Let's scroll back to the left. So in column L, this will tell us whether an email has been sent. Green means it was sent. Red means there was an error of some kind, and you can review the text to see what the error was. White means it hasn't been sent yet, but will be sent the next time the code runs. And purple means there is a tie between two or more houses that you will need to break. Now, as to sending errors, there really shouldn't be any errors in the sheet if it's set up correctly. You just need to ensure that the email address is valid and that a house is listed in column M with the correct spelling to populate information in columns B 
through E. If those are all good, then the errors shouldn't show up. If there is an error and you resolve the problem so that A through E look good, just go and delete the error message. And the next time the code runs, it will try to send the email again. As to ties and house assignments, let's talk about the number in the column N heading. Right now, if any two scores are six points apart or less, the formula will mark column N with the word tie. To break the tie, all you need to do is decide what house to put the student in and then delete the word tie in column N. You can manually assign a student to a house by double clicking their cell in column M and then choosing from the drop down menu. If you like the house they're already assigned to, just delete the word tie in column N and this will check the box in column L, allowing them to receive an email the next time the code runs. Be aware that because column L is a formula, you cannot manually change the checkbox. Now, if you want to lower the threshold for ties so that less students are flagged, lower this number. If you want to raise the threshold and have more control over house assignments, raise the number. For a completely hands-off approach, change the six to a negative one. And even if two houses have the exact same score, the student will still be assigned to a house. Understand though that there's a possibility you will end up with an imbalance in the population between the four houses. That's why I like to put the number around a three. This minimizes ties, but allows you to manually assign students who might fit into more than one house, providing you a little flexibility in balancing the house assignments. Now, if achieving a balance between the houses is important to you, I put a few tools in the spreadsheet to help you achieve that. The first tool is in columns S through W. These score factors give more flexibility to raise or lower the preferences for certain houses. The numbers here are what I've found to work well with my sample data. Your mileage may vary once you start getting live data from your students, so be ready to adjust these as necessary. To work without the score factors at all and see the raw results, just change the numbers to zeros. And then go to the Question Weights tab. Now this is where your second tool can be found. At the top of the sheet are all 28 questions and the answers that map to each house. If you decide to change or edit any of these, make sure you change the associated question and answer on this tab and on the Google form as well. We'll have more about this in part four later. Below the questions, you're gonna see a bunch of charts. This first one is the same that we saw on the other page that gives us a breakdown of all four houses' total populations. The rest of the charts show you a breakdown of each question and which answers are being favored in your results. The numbers in the highlighted cells of row 28 are adjustable. So with my sample data, questions that tended towards one answer over the others got a lower number. For example, if I scroll to the right, I notice right here, question number nine tended to favor one answer over the others. It got a lower weight. Questions that were more balanced, however, I tended to give them a higher weight, as you can see here. Now again, these specific numbers are what worked for me with the sample data, so you may need to adjust these once your students start filling out the form. Feel free right now to experiment with these. As you do, you will notice the effects on the chart. You will also see the effect on the number of ties that get flagged here. The biggest challenge with my sample data was the tendency of respondents to favor answers that led to Serenade House. So that is why I use the question weights and the score factors on the other tab to help mitigate that tendency. Now, honestly, I have no idea what will happen when your students fill out the form, but with a little adjustment of the question weights and the score factors, you should be able to get close to a perfect balance between the houses. Now, for now, let's go ahead and change these back to the default which is listed here. 
Yeah, it'd be good to use a period instead of a comma. Now there's one more tool to help you with balance. This is in the Numbers tab. Now this shows you a breakdown of house assignments by instrument and grade level. If you don't have these exact instrument sets or grade levels at your school, or you want to track other things instead, feel free to change the choices here. In the existing count if formulas, should adjust to the new information. Just make sure you change it on the form as well. Now, if you need to add more choices, like maybe say you have four grades at your school, just go to the row below the choices, right click, click insert row, and then add your other grade level in there. You notice the chart updates to match, but there's no numbers here. We need to just take the formulas that are here and simply copy and then paste. And once students start coming in that are in ninth grade, it'll show up here. Looking at this data can also help when breaking ties. Now, if this sort of thing is important to you, I'll have a more detailed video listed in step 1B about tie breaking and using filter and sort to help get things more balanced. So you can check it out there. But for now, let's finish the tour. The Welcome Letters tab is where all the image and Google Doc file links for the Welcome Letters are housed and are referenced by the sheet. You don't need to edit any of this, so I would encourage you to just hide the sheet, right-click it, and click Hide Sheet. If you have custom images that you want to link and use in the emails, I'll show you how to do that in part three. The last step listed here, step two, is just a reminder to review the notes on the tabs and make sure you understand how they work. But when you're ready, check the box and move on to part three.